So I'm currently recording this in 2024, one year before GM will officially catch up to Tesla in terms of electric vehicle sales in the United States, according to the extremely confident prediction, not blatant lie from Mary B. Aspara made back in October 2021, in which she said this, just pay attention to what her body language says versus the words out of this politician in CEO's clothing's mouth. If you're a long-term viewer, you'll have seen me react to this video at the time, saying there's no fucking way she believes this is going to happen. She's lying to your faces. Watch as Mary shakes her head, telling you the truth of what she believes while lying to her investors, lying to the public, misleading and deceiving regarding GM and electric vehicles. Mary, let's shift to discussion of EVs. You've got the Hummer SUT that you say deliveries will begin this fall. And I think fall, when is that run through? The end of November, early December. Um, so you're going to be having that come out very shortly. And then you've got 30 at least through 2025. So let's check in on total sales for the Hummer EV. It was talked up a lot in 2021 as big deal. At the time, I called it a non-serious attempt, leveraging a familiar brand for an extremely low volume vehicle to give the perception of giving a shit and making some effort about electric vehicles. So let's see how it's done so far a couple of years later. 2,028 Hummer EVs were sold in the last quarter of 2023. For the entire year, <laughs> 2,093 were sold. But wait, what? Huh? How does that work? Well, apparently almost all of the deliveries occurred in the final quarter of the year. In 2022, 854 were sold. And as we can see, quarterly sales in 2022, Q1, 99. Not 99,000, literally 99 Hummer EVs sold. The following quarter, 273, 410, and then 72. In Q1 of 2023, a whopping two Hummer EVs were sold. 63 in Q2, none in Q3, and just over 2,000 in Q4. So grand total Hummer EV sales in the United States, which is the only place they've been sold as far as I'm aware. Maybe a few could have been sold in Canada as well. Who knows? 2,947. Not 1,000, just 2,947. Back to you, Mary. Accelerated your plans in a number of areas. Can you accelerate them even more? Well, it's very important, and I couldn't be more excited about the Hummer um, a vehicle that's coming out. At our recent investor day, as, as investors got out of the vehicle, uh, the, the smile on their face after experiencing Watts to Freedom was just incredible. So, we And I'm sure this smile on the face of GM investors after seeing that the Hummer EV, since these comments in 2021, in the following two years, has sold less than 3,000 units combined. I'm not sure they're still smiling. Let's just leave it at that. Now watch as Mary lies her way through this interview. And this matters because she's lying to her investors, people who should be able to trust what the leader of... Well, leader's a pretty bit of a stretch, isn't it? The, quote, CEO, anything but a leader, though, of GM. You'd hope that investors should be able to trust the CEO of a company making statements about the future. We will be delivering yet this fall. I was at the plant in just a couple weeks ago, and the vehicles look outstanding, so I can't wait to get them into customers' hands. Uh, then we'll be launching the Lyric, which is early next year. I think as we launch these two first uh, products off of the Ultium platform, we're going to look to see how fast can we go. As you know, we've already taken almost half uh, the time out of our vehicle development process because of the Ultium platform and the way it's designed. So, of course, we're going to be looking for ways to to accelerate because we see the strong interest interest in our, our electric vehicles, but we're So Mary claimed their strong interest in GM's electric vehicles and also talked about the other electric vehicle at the time. There was a big Hummer EV and then the Lyric, the Cadillac Lyric EV. Should I, should I do it? Yeah, I'm going to do it. Let's check out Lyric sales. Okay, we're on GM Authority looking at Cadillac Lyric sales by region. We've got Canada, Mexico, and the United States. Let's start with Canada. In January, by the way, just for the record, these are quarterly figures averaged by three. Hence the consistent numbers there. An average of 17 vehicles, not 17,000, 17 Lyrics sold in Canada in January, February and March. An average of 56 in April, May and June. An average of 106, not, again, not, not 106,000, just 806 in July, August and September. And a whopping 127 in October, November and December for a total of 917 Cadillac Lyrics sold in the entire fucking country of Canada in 2023. 917 in mexico <laughs> one literally one sold in 2023 and 18 in 2024 talk about moving the needle and the united states a much bigger market for the lyric obviously i'll just cut to the chase in all of 2022 122 sold and in 2023 9 
154. So Lyric in total has done about 10,000 units total. Hummer, less than 3,000. Let's just call it 13,000. So these two EVs that Mary was touting as flagship electric vehicles from GM, strong interest, great products, blah, fucking blah, blah, blah. About 13,000 sold over two years. That's an average of about 6,500 total flagship electric vehicles sold per year from GM, who led and matter, according to the big guy. P.S. What laptop? Great start. I was going to um, put quality first. Mary, we, we, when we talked with you, what, a couple of weeks ago at Investor Day, uh, one of the goals that you guys st stated emphatically was you will be the market leader in EVs. But right now, Tesla is at 63% market share. By 2025... Okay, this is the part where you really do want to be watching the video. A lot of people listening, audio only. I get it. Watch Mary's body language. Watch her shake her head. Tell the truth with her body as she lies with her words. Market share. By 2025, some believe that you can catch Tesla. You guys are at, what, 9%, 10% right now in the U.S. Do you think that you can catch Tesla by 2025? Absolutely, Phil. When we look at the portfolio we have, not only the Hummer and the Lyric, but uh, Mark Royce talked about that we're going to have a Equinox-like size product that's going to be at around $30,000. We have the Silverado E coming, a GMC product after that. And, and again, all the other products that we haven't announced yet, I am very comfortable because when people get into these vehicles, they are just wowed. So, uh, we will be rolling them out and we're going to just keep working until we have number one market share in EVs. I mean, it's unbelievable. Look at her head shake. Her head shaking as she says, absolutely. This is just, you can't make this shit up. I mean, she's obviously a competent liar, but maybe she could take some lessons from Justin Turdo, Gavin Newsom, some of the world's slicker liars, because this is really embarrassing. I can't believe she said this out loud. Now, the reason I've brought this up, other than for the sake of accountability, is because we hear from Mary that... When people sit in these vehicles, they're wowed. Cool story, bro. How about those sales results? Oh, that's right. <laughs> 13,000 combined for those two models you touted in the preceding two years. And what do we have here? More recently, over on Doomberg, GM misses EV production goal by half. While production woes persist. The majority of sales were bolt models that will be discontinued. GM and Ford are offering incentives to make up for loss of tax credit this earlier in 2024. But wait, there's more. Two years after this interview... We have this. Late last year, GM delays EV truck production at Michigan plant by year. Government Motors said on Tuesday, remember, GM led and matter, they electrified the whole industry, said on Tuesday it will delay production of electric pickup trucks at its plant in Michigan's Orion Township by a year as the number one US automaker, horse and buggy maker would be more apt, grapples with flattening demand for electric vehicles. I'm calling BS on that, but more on that in a moment. The move is the latest sign allegedly, that electric vehicle production and demand may not be as strong as forecast. GM had been set to begin production of the electric Silverado and GMC Sierra in late 2024. The company said the plan is now to start it in late 2025. Wait, hang on. Late 2025. 2025. Oh, we're going to start production of those vehicles, which no doubt will be higher volume than the GMC Hummer EV or the Lyric. In the same year that they were originally planning to catch up to Tesla in the United States. Well, I'm sure Mary definitely believed what she was saying back in 2021 about catching up to Tesla. It's a coincidence she was shaking her head while saying that she absolutely believed she could catch up. So there's nothing to see here. But just to be clear, another article on Reuters here. GM in October said it was abandoning a goal of building 400,000 EVs from 2022 through to mid-2024. But hang on, 400,000 EVs. But hang on. Absolutely, Phil. Uh, 400,000 vehicles divided by two and a half years, 2022 plus 2023, that's two years, plus half of 24, that's two and a half years. That's 160,000 electric vehicles per year. 160,000. Can someone remind me how many vehicles Tesla's producing just in North America alone right now? She lied to you. GM lied to you. Mary's lying to her investors brazenly. Can't believe she thinks she can get away with it. And now Sam Chorus of ARK Invest. Just watch how I tied this all together talks about the claims. We've just heard that GM are slowing down their EV plans because of the lack of demand, supposedly, right? Well, Sam has this to say. Here's a thread to send to people when they quote the media saying there is an EV slowdown. Why is the media claiming an EV slowdown? It's a case of missing the forest for the trees. Year over year, EV sales growth is decelerating. 113% in 2021. 
59% in 2022 and 28% in 2023. That's the trees. It's the wrong thing to look at. Now, this is true. And it's kind of embarrassing to have to point it out. From a small base, a small starting point, a small number, triple digit year over year percentage increases in electric vehicles are possible, but not sustainable over a multi-year horizon. This should be obvious to anyone who has ever used a calculator. And in case you haven't, let's do that together now. So we're going to start with 1 million as a starting point. Just imagine 1 million electric vehicles are produced in a single year. Spoiler alert, by the way, we're roughly 10 times that many today, but keeping it nice and simple. Let's increase that by 100% per year for a decade. Just a decade. It's not that long. And remember, we're already roughly 10 times this amount already. And 100% is only going to be double that amount to 2 million. So it doesn't seem too crazy, right? All we've got to do is double it. That's 100% year over year increase to 2 million. So this is year one. Year zero was a million. Year one is two million. Year two takes us to four million. Year three to eight. Year four to 16 million. Year five to 32 million. Year six to 64 million. Year seven to 128 million, which spoiler alert, by the way, is way more vehicles than are ever sold in a single year on earth ever period. And we're only at year seven. Year eight, 256 million, a quarter of a billion vehicles. Year nine, half a billion vehicles. And year 10, one billion vehicles. Obviously, the percentage increase year over year for electric vehicle sales, that number will decrease over time on average. Otherwise, we end up with absurd scenarios like this, in which a fucking billion electric vehicles are produced per year a decade from now. And the entire global automotive market roughly, actually I'll round it up to make it simpler, is about 10% this amount. It's not even that much, but we'll just call it 10%, 100 million vehicles a year. Clearly, it's unlikely that this occurs. But as Sam points out, this is the wrong way to look at the data. It is a false narrative to imply that EV demand is slowing because the year over year percentage increases of electric vehicles is decelerating. As Sam says, it's the wrong way to look at it. So here's what you should look at. Electric vehicles continue to take share from internal combustion engine vehicles. We're looking at year over year percentage changes in electric vehicle sales versus ICE vehicle sales. Now, the broad thing to notice here is in every one of these years going back to 2018, Battery electric vehicles are increasing year over year. The trend is quite clear. It's very volatile and bumpy. But the trend is very clear. And internal combustion engine vehicles are seeing decreases. Now, it's true. In 2021, a miraculous exception, a 1% year over year increase. Now, why could that have happened? Remember the scamdemic induced supply chain shutdowns? What a huge squeeze on overall automotive sales. This is a bit of a catch up effect. But for every year, the more electric vehicles are sold, Unless internal combustion engine vehicles are sold, market share is lost by internal combustion engine vehicles and gained by electric vehicles. Some people just don't intuitively understand numbers, but it's quite clear ICE vehicles are on the way out, EVs are on the way in. As we can see on screen now, this data from EV volumes, ignore the blue shit, the fake EVs, just focus on green. These are electric vehicle sales, just the numbers, year over year, 320,000 combined, Cut that down, it's about 200,000 electric vehicles sold in 2014. By 2020, a 10 times increase. A couple of years from now, we'll have seen another 10 times increase as well. Does this to you look like something that is slowing down? Sam's thread continues. Market share. Gas vehicle sales peaked in 2017. And you know what happens with an adoption curve? So what we're looking at here, in black, internal combustion engine vehicle sales. In millions. Per year. 2015. And as we can see on screen, the peak was 2017. Since then, it has been a steady decline. These are the facts. This is the forest, not the trees, not the volatile percentage increases or decreases year over year. These are the number of vehicles sold that are internal combustion engine and electric per year. ICE vehicle sales peaked close to a decade ago and are in a steady, and by the way, accelerating decline. People have not yet really understood this. The internal combustion engine vehicle is currently at the beginning of an accelerating death spiral. Less vehicles sold, reversing economies of scale, higher costs, therefore less people buying them because they don't make economic sense, meaning less vehicles sold, meaning lower economies of scale, meaning less <laughs> pricing power, and it just accelerates. My prediction is we're going to see an absolute collapse in ICE vehicle sales in the next five years. And I mean collapse. It's not going to look like a steady decrease. It's going to fall off a fucking cliff. But that's not what you're hearing in the mainstream media. EV demand is slowing down. Four, year over year growth declines as adoption increases, which we discussed earlier. So what does this look like for EVs? This, folks, is an adoption S-curve. We're looking at the adoption curve in blue, as in the percentage, let's just call it electric vehicles in this case, from 0% to 2.5% in 
to 100%. That's blue. That's the adoption curve. The dashed green line represents the year-over-year growth. Note, in the early years, you'll see triple-digit percentage growth year-over-year. Electric vehicle sales increased 140% year-over-year, 138 135%, 127%, 187%, 86%, 55%. And now this is where we start to hear the narrative. EV demand is slowing down. The internal combustion engine vehicle is going to be here for longer than people thought. And then dumb fuck companies, led by dumb fuck politicians in CEOs clothing, yes, I am calling out Mary Beasborough once again, slow down their EV plans. Because apparently, EV demand is, quote, slowing down. This is really important to understand. As adoption increases, it logically follows. There's no other way that this occurs. If we have an S-curve of adoption, which is what we're seeing with electric vehicles, remember, this right here, what we're seeing right now, this curve, visualize this on screen now, this curve is that. We're about, about here, right? We're roughly here. This is the shape of the curve. As this curve increases and follows this shape, the year over year percentage increases follows a corresponding decline, an inverse of the adoption curve. It can't happen any other way. Otherwise, as we saw earlier, we'll end up with a billion plus electric vehicles sold per year a decade from now, which is absurd. The narrative right now, the media is seeing percentage decreases year over year. So too automotive manufacturers and apparently are numerically illiterate and think that signals that EV demand is slowing down. The number's getting smaller on the percentage year over year increase, therefore it's slowing down. I'm, oh, I better slow down our plans. Idiots. Back to Sam's thread. What makes the auto market more confusing is that it's not a monolith. Each time an EV launches into a new segment or price point, a new adoption curve begins. The various overlapping adoption curves ultimately result in an overall adoption curve. This too is important. And here we see essentially the same data that we saw from EV volumes a moment ago. This in a much prettier arc chart. Same shit, same numbers. A beautiful exponential increase. A beautiful S-curve. We're seeing this play out right now. Again, I ask you, please, on screen now, please point to the area on the chart in which you can determine that there's a slowdown in EV adoption. A slowdown in demand. The final post in this thread from Sam is on point. EV growth should flatline as it reaches 100% market share. Don't miss the forest for the trees. I'm here to tell you folks right now that there's a lot of people out there in the finance media, retail investors, institutional investors, and money managers who are missing the forest for the trees. I suspect they will regret this a few years from now. I suggest don't be among the people who've made this error in reasoning. Want more content? Early access? Bunch of perks? Click the links in the pinned comment. AG1 has given me a massive meaningful boost in energy, allowing me to do a lot more every day, including using my brain more and using my body more. I highly recommend you guys and girls check it out. It's an excellent way to fill in nutritional gaps. It's got 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients, plus prebiotics and probiotics and digestive enzymes and adaptogens to help you deal with stress. Plus, if you click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR, you can get yourself a one year free supply of vitamin D3 and K2. But don't take my word for it. Here's what some of you guys and girls have to say. AG1 has changed my life. I was, as you described, treating myself like a circus. I ate like trash, rarely exercised, used alcohol as a stress crutch, cannabis also. AG1 is what gave me the kick in the ass, got me back to the gym, motivated me to do more for myself, family, my business, etc. Keep doing what you do. Now, I know there's some skeptics, the same kind of people who think Elon Musk is a fraud reading this going, what do you thought? There's no way that's possible, bro. It must be a placebo effect. Believe it or not, this is a recurring theme. If you give your body everything it needs to feel and perform its best, including having a lot more energy, you'll need ways to use that energy. For me personally, that includes more exercise, moving my body more, more social activity, and more cognitively demanding tasks, including producing a fuck ton of exclusive content over on Twitter and on Patreon, plus my daily YouTube uploads. The proof's in the pudding. On to another testimonial from a viewer of this channel. SMR, you asked me to provide feedback on AG1. Here it is. It has helped with mental acuity, stamina, and intestinal waste management. Uh, can't read between the lines. It certainly helps with regularity and digestion. That's what the digestive enzymes are for. It has also dramatically reduced my cravings for sugar. You guys need to stop eating sugar. It's fucking poison. I'm 50, 5'9", and overweight, aka a fat motherfucker. I think that's a technical term for overweight, isn't it? Is it fat motherfucker or obese? I can't remember. I average 100 hours a week in the West Texas oil fields as a safety supervisor. Jesus Christ, dude. No wonder you're struggling to keep your weight under control. 100 hours a week. Brutal. It has helped me lose weight. It is not an appetite suppressant. It can help fat people suppress cravings and motivation to be healthier is critical for changing your diet. Love you, brother. Again, this is a great point. It's something people really don't seem to grasp. If you have more energy, 
everything becomes easier. It's like turning on easy mode for life. A few years ago, before I was taking AG1, my health was trash. I was struggling to get through the day, had afternoon fatigue. The last thing I wanted to do was either use my brain or move my body. Didn't have the energy. Now, my biggest struggle every day is figuring out ways to use that energy. I'm exercising way more, doing a lot more with my friends and family, and of course, my work output has increased substantially. And you can fact check me. Check out the average length of my videos I was posting to YouTube three years ago. Need I say more? And one final testimonial. Love this one. Okay, here's the deal for me with this AG1 shit. I'm 41 years old and not the type to eat, drink, smoke, or sleep healthy, so I was skeptical. That being said, here's what I experienced. Day one, meh. Day two, afternoon fatigue was about 45 minutes late. Day three, zero afternoon fatigue. Day four, zero afternoon fatigue plus extra energy. Day five, again, zero afternoon fatigue plus energy. Wondering, what the f really? See, this is the thing, right? The results for many people are just almost too good to be true. This, this is the same experience I had. My afternoon fatigue just vanished out of nowhere. I'm like, wait, what the f Why am I not tired in the afternoons anymore? Surely, it's not that AG1, is it? Turns out it was. Day six and seven, same thing. Day eight, same thing. Plus, I had the want to get things done around the house that I normally would slack off and not get done. Again, the point, extra energy, you'll need to use it, you'll find ways to use it. Day 9, 10, and 11, and today is day 12. I fucking love it. So however you managed to get me to buy it, I'm so glad you did. Thank you so much, SMR. It really changed me so far. Guys, this shit really works. Just try it. By the way, this is the reason I continue to relentlessly promote AG1. A lot of people get real fucking mad in the comments. Oh my god, Snake Oil Salmon sold out. Oh my god, he's a scammer. This is fraud. But Constantly... I'm pretty sure everyone making these comments is also currently short Tesla stock. I'm not particularly concerned about people having a negative perception, those folks suffering from small brain syndrome, still living in my bum's basement syndrome, etc., writing mean comments, claiming AG1's a scam or it doesn't work. I mean, bro, when I get feedback like this, this is what keeps me going. Just try this stuff for a month, and if you don't get these results, get your money back. See, it's a literal no-brainer. It's an IQ test at this point in time. Testimonial after testimonial after testimonial like this. Get your money back if it doesn't work. Just try it for a month, and if it doesn't work get your money back. Today's the day. It's finally time. Be like this guy who was a massive skeptic, but finally, after a thousand promotions in a row, caved in, tried AG1 and has results like this. Head to drinkag1.com slash SMR or click the link at the pinned comment and please let me know how you're feeling in a few weeks time. Now, if you'll excuse me, time to put my extra energy to good use. I'll be recording some more exclusive content for Patreon and my Twitter subscribers. So click the links at the pinned comment. See you over on Twitter and or Patreon and don't forget to grab your AG1. Love ya.